What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really awesome mini PC powered by a Ryzen 9 6900 HS APU. We've got Ryzen 6000 here, and yes, we do have that new Radeon 680M RDNA 2 iGPU. And this is the most powerful mini PC that we've ever tested on the channel that has integrated graphics. Now we've tested more powerful units with dedicated GPUs, but integrated graphics, this definitely takes the cake for mini PCs. And when it comes to this PC we're gonna be testing out today, this was sent over from a wholesaler on AliExpress. And basically what they do is manufacture a bunch of these mini PCs for different companies. And then those companies can kind of customize them to their liking, they can brand them, they can tell them that they want a totally different case on them. And you might get a good idea of what I'm talking about if you do a quick search on Amazon for mini PC. You'll see a ton of them that look exactly the same, but they've got different stickers on them from different brands, and that's exactly what this wholesaler does. But there is great news here because uh, we're going to start seeing these 6000 series mini PCs by the end of November. We've already had some announcements from some of our favorite mini PC brands like Asus and B-Link. They've already announced their 6000 series mini PCs and we're going to start seeing them with the 6600U, the 6800U, and even something like I've got here with the Ryzen 9 6900HS. So yeah, we've got a really powerful 8-core, 16-thread CPU in here. This will run it up to 65 watts right now from the BIOS. We've got a little bit of boost up to around 78 that I've seen so far. But this thing is definitely putting the power down. And uh, the main claim to fame for these Ryzen 6000 series mobile APUs are the built-in RDNA 2 graphics. From Ryzen 7 6000 to Ryzen 9 6000, it's known as the 680M. We've got 12 compute units, and actually in the Ryzen 9, like the 6900HS, it runs at up to 2400 megahertz instead of 22, like the 6800U. But there is gonna be a big downside to a lot of these mini PCs, and that's gonna be RAM speed. So a lot of these 6000 series mini PCs that are going to be released are going to rely on SODIMM RAM. Right now you can actually buy some DDR5 SODIMM RAM, but uh, it's usually kind of right there at 4800 megahertz. Now in comparison, if we take a look at some of the Ryzen 6000 powered laptops and handhelds that are coming or on the market right now, a lot of those are utilizing LP DDR5 and that runs at up to 6400 megahertz. So when it comes to these mini PCs using SODIMM RAM, right now, yes, we can buy 4800 megahertz DDR5 online, but that's really going to be maxed out right there unless we get some overclocking from the BIOS or we could purchase faster SODIMM DDR5 without having to sell a kidney. But when it comes to the specs of the PC we're taking a look at today, this is powered by that Ryzen 9 6900 HS. From the BIOS, so we can switch from 35 to 65. I'm not exactly sure why there's really no settings in the middle there. But we've got 8 cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 3.3, and a boost up to 4.9. With this mini PC here, it's only going to be relying on integrated graphics, and we've got those new 680M graphics based on RDNA 2, 12 compute units up to 2400 megahertz, and when it comes to RAM, this will support up to 64 gigabytes, but we've got 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz, and this will hold those RDNA 2 graphics back, but no matter which way you look at it, it's going to be way faster than Vega. I've also got a 1TB NVMe SSD, and I'm running Windows 11 Pro. Now remember, with this video, I'm not reviewing this exact mini PC. This is more of a test bed to see what kind of performance we're going to see out of these PCs once they're released towards the end of November. Okay, so let's go ahead and boot this thing up. By the way, I do have a 1TB Kingston SSD. This is basically what I store all of my Steam games on. I will tell you that this little thing does get quite loud when you're at full boat. I mean, this will run over 65 watts, and I've got the fan set up from basically 60% to 100%. I didn't want to have any kind of thermal throttling. I wanted to see what kind of performance we could get out of this thing. And remember, once we start seeing these things release, manufacturers are going to come up with all kinds of different cooling solutions. Some are going to be better than others. But I'll tell you, at 65 watts with the 6900HS and the fan set to around 80%, this doesn't thermal throttle while gaming. Now, we can definitely get it to if we run Cinebench R23, but under everyday normal use and gaming, I haven't seen this thing thermal throttle at that 65 watt TDP. And just a heads up, 65 watts is the base TDP. It will turbo beyond that up to around 78 as long as we have thermal headroom there. But as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 9 6900 HS, 8 cores, 16 threads. Like I mentioned, we've got 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is DDR5 running in dual channel, but uh, since we're using SODIMM, it's only running at 4800 megahertz. And that's going to hold back some of these 6000 series mini PCs. I'd love to see some of these come to the market with LP DDR5 running at 6400. 
And finally here, we've got the built-in Radeon 680M GPU based on RDNA 2. And in the 6900HS, it actually runs up to 2400 megahertz. So this will offset a little bit of that RAM. But, you know, going from 4800 megahertz to 6400 megahertz really does make a big difference with these integrated graphics. And when it comes to these mini PCs that are going to be releasing very soon, maybe up to 5500 if you want to spend a little more money on some really good SODAM RAM. But either way you look at it, the 680M is a very impressive GPU, and I want to jump right into some gaming here to show you what this thing can do. Alright, so first up we've got Forza Horizon 5. We're at the medium preset. And from video, we're at 1080p. I've also got the resolution scale set to ultra quality, and this really does help out with that V-Sync turned off. It's not totally necessary if you want to just lock V-Sync at 60 with this game, medium 1080p. And to tell you the truth, with that resolution scale set to ultra quality, I personally don't notice a downgrade in the image quality. I mean, it might just be me or the monitors I use, but it still looks absolutely amazing. And with it set up like this, we can get an average of 75 FPS. Now, one thing I did want to show you was just 720p performance. We're going to leave the other settings alone, but just go to 720p, and we can get over 100 FPS out of this game on average. And of course, we really don't need to go down to 720p, but I just kind of wanted to see what it would put out here. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're getting some amazing performance out of Forza Horizon 5 on this little setup here. Before we move over to some more game testing, I wanted to show you a couple benchmarks that I ran on this system. And first up, we've got Geekbench 5, single core, 1502, multi, 9210. Looking really good here on the single and multi. Remember, we're working with Zen 3 Plus here. Not quite Zen 4, but you know, it's real, real close. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with Night Raid. We came in with a 26,057. Firestrike managed to 6,162, and finally we've got Time Spy here, but I wanted to kind of compare this to a few other little Ryzen APUs that I've tested. So this system with the Ryzen 9 6900HS got a total score in Time Spy of 2,638. When we compare it to the Ryzen 7 5800H, that came in with a 1,437, and I expected to beat that out. We got a nice little bump in CPU performance and a big bump in GPU performance given that we're using RDNA 2 in the 6900HS. And the final one here I wanted to take a look at was the 6800U with DDR5 running at 6400 megahertz. So this is actually a score from my GPD WinMax 2. We got a 2948. So that 6800U with that faster RAM did beat out the 6900HS, and this is exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Remember, with these integrated graphics, it uses our system memory as VRAM, and the faster that memory is, the better performance we can get out of that iGPU. So the 6800U with that faster RAM, on the graphics score at least, beat us out by 300 points, but we beat the 6800U out by 300 points on the CPU side of things. So basically, with these upcoming mini PCs, if we can get faster RAM, we'd definitely be able to beat that out, but right now we're kind of limited by that SODIM RAM, at least at the time of making this video. Hopefully that changes down the road. Up next, we've got World of Warcraft, and I haven't played this game in a while, but uh, the way we've got this set up right now is 1080p, and from the slider, from the graphic settings, we're at number 10, so I'm not exactly sure if this is maxed out. Like I mentioned, it's been a long time since I played it. But from what it looks like, I mean, we're basically at high settings here, 1080p, and we're getting averages in the mid-90s, which is really great for integrated graphics. I know it's not the hardest game to run, but, you know, when you're maxed out like this, the game does look really good. Here's Doom Eternal, 1080p medium settings, and we do get some dips under 60, so we can lower some of those down, but this is one of those games that does run really well on integrated graphics. Even Vega, over 60 FPS with dynamic resolution scale turned on, but with this, no scale whatsoever, 1080p medium settings, and I wouldn't mind playing this all day. When it comes to God of War and these integrated graphics, you're definitely going to want to use FSR. So we're set to performance here, but we're at 1080p low. And keep in mind, if you don't mind running this at 720, you can go to 720 original settings with FSR set to balanced, lock it at 60, and have a really great time with it. 
But with the way we've got it set up right now, we're getting an average of 58 FPS. I mean, we're right there on the edge at 1080p. Next on the list, we've got Overwatch 2, 1080p, high settings with no resolution scale. We can get an average of around 84 FPS. I know that this isn't a super hard game to run, but it's definitely one that I personally like to play, and seeing how well it runs on these new 680M graphics is really impressive. Taking a look at Spider-Man Remastered, and this is one of those that's just really weird on a lot of these iGPUs. Of course, on the Steam Deck, we can run this around 40 FPS, 720p, basically low settings. Right now, we're at 900p low settings with FSR set to performance. We can't quite hit a steady 60 with it. So what I'm going to do is take it down to 720p. We're going to leave that FSR on performance. And even then, we still get those dips. I've just had a lot of issues on different systems with this game, so even on my main PC, I can boot it up and it runs great. If I shut the game down and then start it back up, there's a chance I'm not going to get great performance. It's just really one of those weird little things here. I know it's a newer game to the market, but uh, hopefully all of these issues are ironed out down the road. But I think when it comes to these iGPUs, your best bet is to go ahead and turn VSync on. Just lock it right there at 60. Another one I was getting weird performance with was The Witcher 3. So at 900p low, we can get well over 60 with it. But as soon as I up this to 1080, so I start getting those me. dips into the mid 50s. I figured we'd be well over 60 at 1080p given the age of this game. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those games. I've tested it several times. I've rebooted the system. Not exactly sure what's going on, but maybe down the road I can retest this with faster RAM. And the final game I tested for this video was Cyberpunk 2077. 900p Steam Deck preset, so I'm thinking FSR goes to performance, and we're right there on the edge of 60. I mean, like a couple of these games that we tested, these AAA games, I mean, we're so close to just keeping that locked at 60, but we will get those dips under. So yeah, overall, super excited to see a bunch of these 6000 series mini PCs hit the market. But you know, I really hope that some of these manufacturers do go with LP DDR5 instead of SODIMM. And you know, if I had a choice between a mini PC with the 6900HS and that 4800 MHz RAM, or a 6800U powered system with faster RAM, I would go with that 6800U every single day, just because I know I'm going to get better GPU performance out of it due to that faster system memory. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Keep an eye on my community section because I will be posting updates from some of our favorite mini PC manufacturers. We should get some more announcements soon. Like I mentioned, Asus and B-Link have already announced their 6000 series mini PCs. And, you know, in a week or so, I suspect that we'll get more from different companies. And as soon as I can get my hands on a couple more, I will be making some more videos. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.